Willkommen bei ERA, der Gemeinschaft zur Förderung des modernen Realismus. Heute mit dem Maler Josef Spuvik. Wir sind eine Gruppe internationaler Künstler, die traditionelle Maltechniken anwendet, um realistische, gegenwartsnahe Gemälde zu kreieren. Josef Spugwitsch ist ein australischer Künstler, der in diesem Film von Graham Stevenson vorgestellt wird. Josef ist ein weltbekannter Aquarellmaler. Im Film zeigt er Schritt für Schritt, wie eines seiner Aquarelle entsteht. Der Originaltext ist mit deutschen Untertiteln versehen. G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Color in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Josef Spuvik ist ein Meister der Aquarellmalerei. Seine beeindruckenden Erfolge basieren auf seiner Fähigkeit, jedes Thema auf eine poetische Weise darzustellen. Seine unendliche Bandbreite, seine einfühlsame, lyrische Herangehensweise an seine atmosphärisch geladenen Bilder haben Menschen und Galerien auf der ganzen Welt gefesselt. Graham Stevenson ist nach Melbourne geflogen, um mit dem Maler Josef Skubic ein Interview zu führen. Well, viewers, we're in Melbourne in this episode and we've come down to see an amazingly talented master watercolour artist, a gentleman by the name of Josef Zbugvic. He is quite an extraordinary human being. Let's go on and spend the day with him and see what he's up to. This is going to be absolutely great, let me tell you. Joseph! Hi, how, how are you? Are you? Good, to, Good see to, you. to see you. Come in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you again. Welcome. Thank you. Well, what an amazing studio you've got here, Joseph. Yes, I love it here. I've been here for about seven years now and just love the place. And oh, it's beautiful. Quickly filled it up with all my little collections and things. There I is a it. sense of personal ambiance in here. Yes, so yes. What else have you got along here as well? Ah, there's all sorts of bits. You know, this, I keep all my materials here and I keep uh, my pastels in here. Okay. And, uh, I do quite a bit of handiwork. So, you yeah. know, I've been an artist. I would have been a carpenter or something like That's that. Great. I just love it. My dad was a handyman. I'm, I'm a great believer in having the right atmosphere when I work. Oh, it's just, you know, it's because right. if you don't have that... It's an extraordinary place. So I was just looking at this book here. Yeah. Is this one of your personal sketchbooks? Is it? Yes, yes. Wherever I go, you know, most of it is done. You will notice if, if you look through it, it's kind of cafes wow. because I'll sit down, I'll have a coffee yeah. and then I'll sketch. I've got all my reference books there and oh, whatever. Course, yeah. And again, bits of collection, you know, all over the world. So you've got a fabulous studio, but we're going to spend the day with you and create one of your masterpieces. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. I'll do something wet for you, seeing that it's a rainy day. That'd today. be marvelous. That'd be all marvelous. Right. Let's go back there and have a look at what we're going to do. All right, no worries, mate. Thank you. Well, viewers, here we are today with, I think personally, the master of master artists, uh, Joseph Zbugvic, uh, who, who I think is just extraordinary. I've seen a lot of Joseph's work over the years and obviously followed his career, but uh, to, to say it's an honour to be with you today is an understatement, my friend. It's just, it's an extraordinary situation Thanks, to be Graham. here. Uh, it really is. Um, tell me a little bit more about your history. Yeah, I came here when I was 18, yeah. so I was almost a grown man. My friends were getting married when okay. I left. I uh, arrived, I went straight to art school to be an industrial designer. Mm -hmm. I loved cars from when I was a kid and it was my dream to be an industrial designer. I did finish a diploma of industrial design, but in the process I discovered uh, watercolour. We had to do renderings of things we designed uh -huh. in watercolour. And as I say, the rest is history. I just absolutely fell in love with the medium and won my first prize here. I'd only been here about two years, yeah. I think, and sold my first painting for twice the money my dad was earning working. 
That's amazing. So it was obvious where I was heading from there. I have a very simple philosophy on painting. Mm -hmm. I just say, I paint, I just paint. Yeah. Everything else comes after. Yeah. And I love painting to this day as much as I ever did. Sure. I've never been to a, a, a class, never okay. been to a teacher. I, I simply learnt everything myself. In the 70s, there was no DVDs, there was no yeah. programs like yours. Yeah. I just simply went and painted, and that was it. And the funny part about that is that um, that you are now uh, one of the great watercolour teachers throughout the world. I mean, you go all over yeah, the world teaching other people. Odd. I mean, booked out two to three years in advance just yes. to get in. Interesting, isn't it's it? It's incredible. I hate snobbery in art. Yeah, so I, do I. I, I. I think it's just awful. So do I. All these concepts. Once you have to explain a painting what it means, yeah. well, it's no longer communicating to the viewer. Sure. Okay, so when starting one of your paintings, what and how do we go about it? One of the first things that happens is that I paint outdoors a lot. Mm -hmm. It's only the major work that's in a studio, but that's what we're doing today for the sake of your program. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll show you a painting later that I did do on location we're going to do. Sure. But I know I've got a photograph there somewhere okay. of it. So we'll go and find that. All right. And that will be at the beginning. I thought being wet in Melbourne, and yeah. you've come down from warm Brisbane, uh, I, I actually do something iconic like a, a wet Melbourne street scene. Okay. So it's this little photo. What I'll do first is I will actually work on the photograph itself. Mm -hmm. It's something that I started to do a little while ago. So it's Photoshop okay. basically, but it's done by me. Oh, okay. Uh, so that will be my next thing. So I'll All use right. that. Well, let's go and do that then. Yep, yep, okay. that's the next thing. Okay, Joseph. So from here, uh, you're going to obviously go to your palette. Uh, what you know? What colours? I, I think that you're using Schmincke. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, the wonderful Schmincke paints, which are uh, um, a good quality product with amazing uh, intensity. Mm -hmm. If there is anything to be said about them that differentiates them from the rest of the watercolours, that's it also the, the ability to stay moist. So the colour spectrum is obvious. I start with yellows and go through earth colours into oranges, reds. I just think of them as warm or cool. The photograph in itself is it's quite nice. It's showing us the wet day and all that, but the spacing of the cars is not very nice. It's not telling much of a story except it's a wet day in, in, in Melbourne. What I want to tell is uh, an intersection it's a rainy day, people are scurrying across, and there's traffic, and it's evening peak hour, let's say. Absolutely. You know, that's what I want to tell. I mean, it, and you, you really do tell a story, don't you? You have to. Yeah. If you don't tell a story, you're just making a picture. I won't fuss with it too much, you know, it'll be pretty quick. First thing, I feel that's very flat, and it needs a, a lead in, so a few more lines like that. I think a little tram there to really make it Melbourne would be good and I'll have a bigger car probably about here somewhere. So highlights first. This tree is too big, so I'll probably eliminate some of that and not have it come in so far. So this is truly very, very rough and I'll end up probably hardly looking at this and we'll have some tail lights in there. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, there we are. Marvellous. They'll do. Absolutely marvellous. All right, it's time to paint, so I've got to stretch some paper and so on. Now I'm going to stick some wonderful Ashes paper on, onto this uh, bit of plywood. So the next move is to do some drawing. I usually start with the biggest shapes first, which are in any landscape, the two biggest shapes are sky and earth. So a horizon line, as people tend to call it. And I'll say, you know, we'll have it a little bit below half. So that's for our, uh, our road is going to be below here and the building's up there. So here's a tram and the little antenna which goes up. The rest of it, oddly enough, is not that important, apart from the two uh, lights, which are fairly crucial. And Joseph, you actually have your own collection of brushes as well. I'm very envious about all of this, I have to tell you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your brushes? Yes, look, it happened by accident. I went to Spain to do a workshop and discovered that the brushes I was using were made 
half a mile from where I was giving a workshop. And I met the owners who were delightful people and I was instantly sold on them. The first thing I'm going to do is wash in a large, very pale wash for the sky. I may have some clouds, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And then I'll wash in the surface of the road itself. Students tend to make skies too dark and their watercolours lose light. That is, they lose that translucent, beautiful light quality that is watercolour. Some people even say a sky is the eyes of the portrait of a painting in landscape painting, because uh -huh. the sky is what gives the painting quality. So here comes the wash, and as I say, I start at the top, and I just simply go over the top quite a bit, to make sure that it's very wet. It yeah. looks a bit too dark, so I'll put a bit of water in. So every time I go in to mix a wash, I add just a little bit more colour. So it's just a fraction darker. And that's it. We travel down. So. There we are, we've come down to about close to these cars and buildings. We're somewhere in here, aren't mm -hmm. we? So it's now time to start looking after highlights and so on. And I want to introduce you to Mr. Bead. This, this thing here, I call him Mr. Bead. It's kind of a joke, yes. out of respect. This welt of color is your locomotive in your watercolor. That's what takes the paint down. You can see it running as soon as you break past it. Yes. And grey is made of many colours. Mix your greys by using all your three primaries, reds, yellows and blues, and you'll end up with a nice uh, gradual wash like that. These are directional lines to lead us into the painting eventually. You should never start, put your brush to the paper unless you are almost dead certain in what you're using, how you're going to use it, what it is going to be, and see it in your mind's eye. If you're if you just blindly going and see what happens, it'll be just happy accidents. Mm -hmm. and that's okay for, you know, abstracts and things. But a, a realistic painting like this, you've really got to concentrate and say, look at that for a second. So you'll find that I often fiddle and fiddle with pigment here and do all sorts of things. I seem to be doing nothing, but I'm actually doing probably the most important part of this painting. And that is, I am trying to see it in my mind's eye. I do what I call a test. I just make a mark and I say, is that too dark? Is it too light? And it looks about right. It can quite often look as if it is too light when it's not. And I start with this little bits, uh, air coolers, aerials, whatever. I'm going to re-wet that. There's a few bigger droplets. I've just given it more life. So it's wetter, so it'll last longer. clean water and soften this so we get this lovely misty look going back. This re remains alive, this line. As long as that bead is there, it's alive, mm -hmm. so I can keep going down. Once it dries, it's the end. Sure. It's finished. So that tone alone is bringing that forward. We've got a weak tone there, stronger, yes, stronger, yes. stronger still. Okay. And now it's time to not muck around. It's, it's an ergonomic way of doing it. There it goes. As this tightens up, as it is indeed, it's starting to slowly, you know, settle and dry and so on you really need to start looking at the shapes a little bit more carefully. So if you leave this funny little thing here and it dries, it'll come to haunt you. So, and the car has to be cut. A few bits of architectural detail, but some of that I'll dry brush in later. 
And this is quite nice, it's painted itself. And the more you can do that when you paint watercolour, the better off you will be. And another thing that I'm fond of doing is uh, scratching things out with my nails. I'm not scared of touching my watercolours with my hands. Uh, fingers are great for lifting off just a bit of paint, not yeah. too much. Um, so I'm quite happy doing these sort of things. I'll scratch a little highlight there, put that in front, and I think make this wall a bit lighter. So this will have my DNA on it and fingerprints. So no one can afford this. They can't mistake it. Yeah, and just the last kiss of life as it's drying to see what it does. And you really just float that mist over it, don't you? Yes, you don't blast it close. Yes. It's, you're finished. And I now need to start moving into my trams and cars before this dries completely. If you trust your watercolour and mm -hmm. if you just trust yourself and say what destroys uh, paintings is not technique, it's lack of confidence, lack of belief, faith. That's what ruins it. You know, um, if you don't believe that it's going to work, you'll never convince the viewer that it will work. A little bit of colour into this, just there. Got a bit of a hump on there. Fine adjustment. This is a bit high. There. Better. Um, time to do this last car here. That's the back of it. This one is driving up the street. The dark under the car, the shadow, is at more important than the wheels or headlights on a car. That's what anchors it to the ground. There's some mirrors sticking up. I'd like to put in uh, the taillights and make them run into there. So we've got this bright, oh, yes, beautiful, it? bright cadmium yeah, orange, which is doing it. Now I'm going to do the same with the headlights. And I use it straight out of the tube, nice and thick. and. Um, put it on again while this is still quite moist so it melts in. Now I'm going to really have to go for it. I'm going to just give it yet another kiss of life. It won't hurt. Never hurts. It always looks good. There. Beautiful. Too much paint on a brush. There is a tree growing on this side. It is a fantastic way of connecting this shape and draping it in, in front of this one. And it's a, just a, a, a lovely way of making kind of a, like a tunnel to look through. We simply do this, it's not dark enough. Not enough mixing. What, and what type of brush have you got there? Is it, is it's just a sable, uh, yeah. uh, squirrel brush, soft but um, not, not so big. I need to get a bit of control. The other thing I do is I actually punish it by going like that. Uh -huh. So it goes into this shocking thing like that and you push it forward and that should give us our tree leaves. And again, vary your brush marks so they don't look the same. Uh, the worst thing for your brushes is to not wash them out and clean them after you've finished painting. I promised myself to wash and clean them every time I finish. It was a New Year's resolution in 1968. And I still don't do it and hence it absolutely ruins your brushes. There you go. It is shocking <laughs> because it goes into this hard, harsh thing. A few branches again. And you, this paint is lovely and thick. I'll do quite a bit of uh, rigor work now. Uh, here's a little highlight and I will change that into a light. Like so. 
I sell some work in America and they always find these wires a little bit strange but Melburnians readily accept these wires running through the sky for the trams but to me they are just simply are connecting and uh, directional lines I could, they're just terrific for uh, directing your eye through the picture Time for this wonderful cadmium red mixed in with the cadmium orange. But I actually will use them straight out of the tube. Oh, I see what's happening. And here. then this is pre wetting the paper so it gives pigment room to run. Yes. Not everywhere, but enough to give it space and we'll get it really wet. It has to be about as wet as you can get it. And I'll choose a reflection colour which will be, I think, a little bit warmer. And it either works or it doesn't. But as you can see, this time my adage of things painting themselves is dead true. You have to just let it do what it wants to do. You can see that this is now starting to work as a wet road. Yeah. I think that's about it. I can just angle this a little bit and um, I will sneak in some little figures here. I'll give him a little umbrella. So, and I'll just lift this off. Well, there we are. This is now finished and this gives it that nice clean edge I was speaking about before and I think it's reading quite well. It's, um, quite pleased with it. It's quite just pleased. amazing. Thanks, mate. And uh, the crew, it's lovely everybody standing in the background there, and myself would really, really Thanks like to so thank lot, you mate. so much for Good having us down you. here. Thanks for coming to it's my been, studio It's been an extraordinary time. day, it really has. Um, as you can see, when I used the word master, I was not kidding by any means. Um, Joseph's an incredibly talented human being. But it's yes, a, it's a really rare opportunity you get to walk into a studio of a man of this calibre, so we're really grateful to be here. Um, once again, you can always come to Colour in Your Life and see what we're doing. But uh, until we meet again, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. An dieser Stelle möchten wir uns ganz herzlich bei Graham Stevenson bedanken. Er hat uns dieses Filmmaterial freundlicherweise zur Verfügung gestellt. Wir haben mit ihm verabredet, auch zukünftig einige seiner Produktionen hier in diesem Programm zu präsentieren. Wir werden viele international bekannte Künstler zu sehen bekommen. Wir freuen uns auf diese Zusammenarbeit. Dies bringt uns zum Ende unseres heutigen Programms. In den kommenden Monaten werden wir weitere Folgen mit Malerinnen und Malern aus aller Welt präsentieren. Halten Sie deshalb Ausschau nach ERA, der Association Embracing Realist Art, und besuchen Sie unsere englische Internetseite realist-art.com.